Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. For the third time in less than a month, a First Nations community in Canada uncovered evidence of hundreds of unmarked graves near a formal residential school site for Indigenous children. The three discoveries in British Columbia and Saskatchewan of 182, 215 and 751 graves respectively have left the country reeling in shock but not in surprise. In Canada, the Indian residential school system was a mandatory boarding school created for indigenous people with its main objective to colonize these individuals to the dominant white settler Canadian culture and society. They were funded by the Canadian government and run by Canadian churches. Data says about 150,000 indigenous children were sent to these schools, often forcibly, where they were banned from speaking their languages and practicing their cultural traditions. Moreover, physical and sexual abuse were common occurrences. These schools hold a piece of the dark and tragic experiences the Indigenous communities have gone through in Canadian history. Today, we are joined by Member of Provincial Parliament Fazil Hassan to discuss these unmarked graves and what significance they hold. Thank you for meeting me today. Thank you, Simon Vani, for having me again. Thank you very much for inviting me. To begin with, what should the public know about these residential schools? Well, I think uh, Canada is facing a reckoning with ongoing horrific discoveries of children uh, torn from their families and buried at farmer residential school sites. Um, and this is also um, um, a history of residential schools. And we are united in solidarity and support for indigenous communities that are grieving, as well as facing the pain and trauma this brings back to the service. In our community, we are standing in solidarity with indigenous people, listening and facing the truth of Canada's history and ongoing colonization. We are committed to working to address and undo these harms. And what role did the Canadian government play in orchestrating these heinous conditions at residential schools? Uh, uh, of course, uh, we are uh, reflecting, of course, and fighting for a better Canada. I know we can build together a Canada rooted in justice, peace, and respect for treaty rights and obligations. And I know that residential schools, uh, that children have been taken away from their homes uh, without the consent of the parents um, to uh, you know, um, force them into uh, uh, residential schools to somehow you know, um, uh, uh, take away from their traditions and languages and cultures. Um, here in Ontario, we can start by fighting for an indigenous-led uh, um, a fully funded search of residential school sites for, indig for indigenous children. How, how have you seen how people are reacting or how these discoveries are impacting people today? Well, it is very painful. I mean, discoveries in Saskatchewan and also uh, in BC. And also, it's also sad that um, uh, in, in 2020-21, uh, that the uh, 2015, the Through and Reconciliation Commissions of, uh, of Canada, the 94 recommendations, the calls to action has not been implemented. People are angry and, and, and sad. And all uh, uh, Ontarians and, and across Canada are reflecting uh, what it means to be Canadian. And we need uh, to make uh, 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 these wrongs, this dark history uh, 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 on the right track to make sure that um, we also provide uh, Indigenous communities in Ontario and across Canada a drinking water, you know, uh, and also a living, uh, uh, a basic living conditions. It, it is terrible, the conditions uh, that they are in, and also calls uh, to action are probably, you know, uh, uh, sourced and fully implemented. You know, governments have a, a, a central role to play here, but we don't need to be a government to act. Uh, there are actions in the calls for every Canadian. I know people are responding positively, and we need to make sure that the three levels of government act now and provide, first and foremost, uh, a drinking, clean drinking water, you know, and basic, basic things in life for Indigenous communities in Ontario mm -hmm. and across the, can across, uh, the country. I agree, I completely agree. But going back to these graves that were found, why do you think that they were unmarked or what is the significance of the fact that they were unmarked? Um, 
it is a shameful that these governments run boarding schools, you know, uh, were put in place uh, in first place to assimilate indigenous children and try to destroy indigenous cultures and languages. And uh, these uh, massive uh, um, um, uh, uh, graves that are unmarked, uh, that, what that means is um, um, all these children, uh, no, nobody knows who they are. We need to, know, to learn more about uh, uh, these crimes uh, against humanity and support also my colleague, uh, Sol Mamakwa, for the calls uh, for all churches and residential schools to release any records related to residential schools. Uh, we, we are still waiting, as I said earlier on, for, for the uh, 94 uh, calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation um, a Commission. And it is an outrage, as I said again and again, that indigenous people are still denied a safe drinking water and decent living conditions. No, I, I hear you. From your personal experience, what was your reaction when you heard about these, so far, three discoveries in British Columbia and Saskatchewan? Well, that means there are more, more uh, graves. Uh, many, we need to uh, uh, immediately uh, um, uh, do my colleagues uh, uh, Solomon Marcos calls to investigate and open the books of the churches and make sure uh, they, they, they are more, and, um, and this is also really disturbing and very sad, um, but we can do better. Now it's the time for action, mm -hmm. to, uh, to listen also the indigenous communities and indigenous-led solutions, and also nation-to-nation -nation, uh, dialogue must start, and we need to implement immediately mm -hmm. those uh, uh, recommendations of 94, 94 uh, Truth and, uh, and, uh, and Reconciliation Commission, which has not been implemented since 2015. It's a shame that many members of the indigenous communities do not have a safe drinking water in a, in a decent living conditions in Ontario in two, 2021. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable, absolutely. So going back to what you just said about investigating more, First Nation Chief Cadmus Delorme and other indigenous leaders have said that there, it is likely that we will continue to find similar discoveries relating to more residential schools. What, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, that, that is right, and I, I do um, uh, share uh, that we need to work closely with First Nations and listen to what they need and act in a through nation-to-nation -nation dialogue. Um, Ontario has in its power uh, the ability to act um, on this, and they have chosen uh, empty words um, over concrete actions. We need uh, uh, to act now and listen to chiefs um, and the members of the indigenous community in Ontario and across the country. With these recent discoveries, so calls to remove statues, monuments, and to rename buildings in honor of the Canadians who took part in creating and maintaining these schools have been renewed. So, for example, I'm sure you've heard of this. A statue of Egerton Ryerson was toppled from Ryerson University on Gould Street following the discovery of the 215 unmarked graves at the former Kamloops Residential School. So what are your thoughts on this? Should these monuments and statues be removed? Should names be changed? Well, I think that's a debate uh, that we need to have together. And I think uh, this is also a painful history uh, that the indigenous uh, communities are going through. And we have to welcome uh, and listen, as I said, to uh, a nation, nation dialogue and also to make sure that we as a society need to treat indigenous peoples with dignity and respect and make amends of the horrific wrongs of our past mm -hmm. and this debate of past uh, um, statues and others. I think it's a discussion. Uh, we should also listen how they feel about it, and we can act upon with discussion and also input of the community. And speaking of supporting these communities, what is your political party doing? Well, we have also called exactly what I've just um, said. We are doing, uh, as you know, Sol Mamakwa is a member, uh, the only member in the legislature who is indigenous uh, from the north, who have uh, uh, basically have been speaking openly, and I support, uh, stand solidarity with his ideas and inputs. He's a member of our caucus. My leader have also called for immediate implementation of 94 uh, reconciliation uh, commission's uh, recommendations. And also, we have to also tackle immediately uh, the problems of a clean drinking water, which is uh, prevalent in the indigenous communities. Also, at basic decent living conditions. 
So we can start with that. And also, uh, we also called for uh, indigenous-led uh, um, 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 also uh, solutions and to also uh, work with and listen and be really, really, this is the time for concrete action and calls to action for the uh, 94 uh, um, uh, uh, reconciliation um, uh, um, a commission, also a calls to action are uh, properly also resourced and fully implemented, you know, mm -hmm. and governments have a central role, we've said that to play, but we don't need a government to, to, to we don't need to be a government to act and also have a solidarity and, and, and working with indigenous community. There are actions in the calls for the 94 Reconciliation uh, Commission uh, that in ordinary individuals and everyone calls that they can act immediately mm -hmm. but it, it will start quickly for the uh, basic uh, uh, living conditions improved and also uh, immediately uh, bringing to a clean drinking water in indigenous communities and in your opinion how can those of us who are not indigenous support these indigenous communities absolutely first and foremost is listened you know and listened and simply uh, 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 acknowledge that the indigenous people are the first nations and that we need to work with them, nation to nation, a dialogue that are indigenous-led solutions. And, and then we can uh, listen and then also act. And that is, I think, uh, uh, what we need to do. And we need these governments, uh, past and present, to do their part. They are important, uh, 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 properly resourced and fully implemented. Uh, 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 those uh, calls also is needed immediately. Uh, we don't also uh, need the Prime Minister uh, calling, uh, taking to young children to court. That is not helpful at all. I hear you. One final question. What do you think should be the takeaway from finding these unmarked grave sites, the ones that we've already found, and also if possibly we find more? Well, I think I think I think we will find more, and I think it's important that uh, we investigate, and that, uh, as my uh, colleagues from Momakwa have called for, uh, you know, opening uh, the churches and all uh, governmental uh, residential schools, uh, making sure that these investigations are in concluded, and these crimes against humanity is is dealt with. Uh, definitely, we need to be able to listen more of the indigenous communities and also act. Uh, it is now it tells us that we need more than ever to actually implement um, what the indigenous communities have been calling for and, and, and indigenous-led uh, solutions and nation-to-nation -nation dialogue. I hear you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for Thank asking you, my Sa questions. Thank you, Simone, for having me. Thank you. You're watching the International News Channel on TAG TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos. Until next time, I am Simone Ivani.